I went to the theater and I saw a couple of movies. I saw Les Miserables and I saw Lincoln. I have to say both of these movies were absolutely fantastic. I I have almost nothing bad to say about them. Um, we'll start off with Lincoln, I think. Uh, I thought the entire cast was just brilliantly cast. It was wonderful. Uh, there was so many stars in this thing, I couldn't begin to name them. Obviously, Daniel Day-Lewis stars as Lincoln himself. Uh, Sally Field as Mrs. Lincoln. Uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, James Spader, Hal Holbrook, Tommy Lee Jones. Everybody was just perfectly cast in this movie. I thought it was just very, very good. I had no complaints. I was saying, oh, I don't know, that's so good. I don't know if the, he would have said it that way. Pretty much Really good movie. Um, few complaints as far as language goes. There was a number of uses of uh, God's name taken in vain and uh, in a connection with a certain curse word, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, but uh, other than that, fantastic movie. Uh, interesting line in the progression of uh, films taking parts of Lincoln's life and making them into movies. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen any film that has tried to focus primarily on the passing of the 18th Amendment. And that's primarily what this movie is about. I'm not really going to give away too many spoilers here, so you probably don't need to worry. I mean, you're going to know this mostly from the trailers and so on. Um, most of the movie is about trying to pass the 18th Amendment, trying to end slavery in the United States. Uh, there were a few tactics in there that, uh, as far as I understand from my historical sources, uh, that are true to what happened and that those things are more or less did happen that way, uh, which I don't know how honest they are, but then again, it's politics. And sometimes to get good things done, you do have to go certain sneaky ways with politics. And I did like what, um, the dynamic between Thaddeus Stevens and Abraham Lincoln, both portrayed as good men trying to get slavery abolished. But Thaddeus was so far to that one side that he was like, no, no, we have to do everything right now. We have to abolish slavery, then we have to make it so that the former slaves can vote and that they can hold jobs and own property and everything else. And we want everything, we want them to have exactly the same rights as a white man would exactly the same right away, right out of the gate. And as much as, you know, Lincoln basically kind of says he wants to see that, he also knows that it's too much for people to accept all at once. Uh, modernly, we look at that and we would go, no, you're nuts. I mean, come on. Yeah, Thaddeus is right. We need to just make it so that it's that way. But unfortunately, as, as with most things, things have to be coaxed into it. Yes, we want, uh, you know, Lincoln says, yes, we want them to be able to do all these things. He has a beautiful illustration, and he basically says, if you know true north, and you will hold to the course of true north no matter what happens, it's not always good, because you may come across a bog or a swamp or a mountain, and either you're going to have to climb over the mountain, or you're going to get trapped in the swamp. And we can't afford to do that. This is a, you know, the country needs to be brought together first, and then we can start moving towards these things. So it's very well thought out, very brilliant. It's just got so much wonderful dialogue, so many wonderful characters. I, I mean, I just can't say enough about this movie. I really, really enjoyed it. However, I want to focus on somebody who's a little less well known to you. Uh, there's a certain character in the movie, George Yeeman is the name of the character, and uh, the actor who plays him is Michael Stahlbarg. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that right. If, forgive me, Michael, if I mispronounce your name. Uh, but this guy is really good. So far, I've seen him in about three or four pictures. Uh, he was in Hugo as Rene Talbard. The, um, he was a film historian who was amazed to find out that a certain person was alive. I won't spoil that movie if you haven't seen it. Uh, he was in Men in Black 3 as Griffin, which I will get to Men in Black 3 in just a moment, but I loved that one too. Uh, he was so adorable in uh, Men in Black 3. A very kind of absent-minded kind of character going on, and it was just 
engaging to watch him, and he was like the best character, especially new character in the movie. And once he came on the screen, he kind of just stole the rest of the film as much as he was in it anyway. Uh, I haven't seen it yet, but apparently he's in Hitchcock as Lou Wasserman. Uh, he's just a fantastic actor. When he th There's this situation where they're trying to get votes to pass the 18th Amendment, and they're trying to convince him to sign on to this and say that he will vote yay to pass the 18th Amendment. And uh, he... Th you can see he's really conflicted. He, you know, he has one group telling him he should do this. He has another group telling him, no, this is wrong. You have to go with your conscience. You have to go with what's right. You see this very interesting dynamic with that he, and he plays the conflict very well. And there's a moment, which I won't ruin, you know, what he says, but when he makes his vote, first he whispers his answer and then they call for it again because he, he couldn't bring his voice up to say it because he was so afraid. And then he says it again, and then he yells it across the chamber. And it's just very powerful and great. It's a really, you know, big moment for him. Love this guy. Hope he continues to do good things. So far, loving what I'm seeing from him. He's done a few little things uh, that I've not heard of. He did a movie called A Serious Man. Uh, he did some episodes of television uh Law and Order, and a uh, few other things like that. But uh, great actor. Hope to see more from him. Really enjoy his performances so far. As far as taking the family to this movie, I think it's rated PG-13 for a reason. The language at times can be a little rough, uh, but uh, and there's some scenes of violence and everything. Uh, one interesting note, uh, at the very beginning of the movie, look for Lucas Haas who was in the movie that I just recently reviewed called Lady in White. He's all grown up now. One of the things I loved about the portrayal of Lincoln in this movie was that they actually gave him a chance to be folksy and tell stories and stuff like we know Lincoln did. He always had an anecdote. He always had a story. And there's one character in the movie that even says, no, no, you're not telling, roping me in again. You're not telling me some little anecdote. I don't want to hear it. I've got more important things to worry about. And, of course, he goes on and tells the story anyway, which that was just an enjoyable moment. It, it, in a story that could have been very bleak and very boring even because it's all about politics and legal structures and all this other kind of thing, this movie was very interesting and held my attention through the whole film, had those heroic cheering moments, those deep, dark despair moments, the funny moments. That it was. It's just a perfect movie experience. Again, my only complaint with the movie would be, one, the, the language, and then two, there is one situation with the character of Thaddeus Stevens, which is played by Tommy Lee Jones, that is a bit of an embellishment. It's what we suppose happened, but we're not really sure, that kind of a thing. So, not really a complaint, but uh, just, I don't necessarily like people embellishing on history too much, because... You know, you, then people think that's the way it was when it, in this case it's something like we think it might have happened this way, but we're not sure. But we're going to portray it as this is the way it was. Wanted to make a couple of recommendations. Won't talk about them too much. But uh, if you want more on the history of Lincoln and what happened with him, I recommend primarily a movie made way back in the day with Raymond Massey called Lincoln and Illinois. That focuses primarily on his life before going to the presidency, and it really kind of ends at his his departure from Illinois, uh, going to be the president. More recent film that I recommend highly is called The Conspirator, and uh, this was a fantastic movie. It stars James McAvoy, who you will recognize as Xavier. Uh, from the newest X-Men movies. He was also Mr. Tumnus in the Chronicles of Narnia movie, the first one. Uh, Robin Wright, who you will recognize as Princess Buttercup in The Princess Bride and uh, from uh, Unbreakable and many other films. Primarily dealing with the conspiracy to assassinate Lincoln after the assassination has happened and the trial of Mary Surratt. Uh, also a very good film. Highly recommend those three films. And, uh, of course, then the real story, the one that everybody knows is the truth, but nobody wants to admit it, Abraham Lincoln, Vampire Hunter. Okay, yeah, no, that was a silly movie, but it was still kind of fun to see Abraham Lincoln kicking butt. Just saying. 
Now on to the second movie I want to talk about, Les Miserables. Can't say too much about the movie. It was it was a great movie. Loved it. Uh, but if you know the story of the original, then it's you know follows it very well. Um, it, it, this plot is too complex to get into here. But uh, I enjoyed it very much. I know a few songs already from the musical before I went in to see the movie. And uh, thought everybody, again, was a perfect cast. I mean, I, I had two great movie experiences, one right after the other. I mean, within about 40 minutes of each other. This was just wonderful. Um, I The ones I want to talk about, of course, most highly are... Uh, Hugh Jackman as Jean Valjean knocked it out of the park, played it very well. Of course, he's a great singer. He's uh, been on Broadway and things like that. A lot of people only know him as Wolverine. And while he's great as Wolverine, don't misunderstand me, he's mm, its not a full range of his acting talent. For the most part, he's playing brooding and dark and mysterious. But here he's got the whole range of emotion. He's very sympathetic as a character. Uh, now, a lot of people have disrespected um, Russell Crowe for his performance as Javert. I'll say that he's not necessarily a singer. Um, but that being said, he's fantastic in the role. I enjoyed watching him. He, uh, he really, I think the one director or a, a person associated said that they really didn't worry too much about the singing. They wanted the singing to be good and right, but they were more worried about the actor's acting the moment they wanted and uh now again one thing that they did with this movie was that they for the first time apparently actually on every song used the recording on that day for the most part i, I would imagine on the opening which no spoilers here really uh they're pulling a ship into dock which i believe in the original story it was just them working on a rock quarry no big deal here but uh, I think uh, in, in that they must have had, you know, prior recording because there would have been no way you could have heard it over all that water and everything like that. Because they really did have the actors getting splashed and everything like that. It really brought it home. I think if you're a little bit familiar with the story, before you go into it, you'll enjoy it more. So for especially those of you with younger kids... Uh, and you want to take your kids to see this movie, it is a cultural experience. I'll tell you that right off. Uh, I would say get familiar with the story first because as as good as it is, it can be a little hard to follow, especially with all the singing and everything, if you don't know the story. Um, that was my opinion of the musical when it was on Broadway. I, I saw it at uh, in Boston, actually, uh, more than 10 years ago. It was, it was 2000. One, I believe, when I saw this. So, uh, when I saw it on Broadway. I fortunately was already familiar with the story. Primarily thanks to this movie. Uh, let's try and get that out of the glass. There we go. Les Miserables with Liam Neeson, Jeffrey Rush, Uma Thurman. The story of Les Miserables is so big and so complex and has so many characters. You can only focus on a few characters at a time. That, And you have to focus on, you know, primarily the main people that are important. And that being said, the main difference between the Liam Neeson version and the musical version actually comes in the second half of the story. But I'll get to that in a moment. Uh, but yeah, it's really interesting. It's really engaging. Love the music. Anne Hathaway as Fontaine. Holy cow. I mean, wow. She... I'm a somewhat fan of hers. I, I, I won't necessarily go to see a movie just because she's in it, but I won't stay away from it either, and I do enjoy most of what she does. But when she especially is singing I Dream the Dream, which is one of the most famous songs from this show, knocks it out of the park, but at the same time, you believe she is in just devastation. You know, a lot of times, especially... Uh, when you see people just sing the song by itself, and this is understandable, they just sing the song. And you don't really feel the despair inherent in that song. And here with Anne Hathaway, you do. You know that she is in the utter depths of despair. And she just nails it, knocks it out of the pot. She's just wonderful.
Uh, also, of course, there is a character that... Th this is the major difference between the Liam Neeson film and the uh, musical. The character of the Tenardiers uh, are primarily in the Liam Neeson film only at the beginning, and then most of what happens later on with them is deleted uh, from the Liam Neeson version. In the musical, they're much more important, and they have a lot more going on. Primarily, though, the daughter of the Tenardiers, Eponine. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that right. Please forgive me, Les Mis fans, if, you, if I'm pronouncing that wrong. Please don't, you know, be upset with me. I, I have a hard time with that name. I'm just trying to get it right. But Eponine, I believe, is how you pronounce it. And she is played by a fantastic young actress, Samantha Box. This young lady is fantastic. Now, as far as I know, this is really her first movie, her first film. Uh, she has uh, done a couple of other things, uh, primarily on Broadway and uh, in shows across England. She was born in England, apparently. Uh, she is just fantastic. Now, I did see her before playing the role of Eponine when she did it in the uh, 25th anniversary show with uh, the one Jonas brother. And I thought she was fantastic then. But in that situation, she's really just kind of singing the songs. Here, she's acting. And boy, can she act. I mean, she is wonderful. You feel what she's feeling. Again, very much like uh, Fontaine in the beginning. You feel what she's feeling. And this girl knocks it out of the park. That said, I want to take a, just a slight rabbit trail here for a moment. Say, if they make a movie of Wicked, the musical Wicked and they don't get uh, Adina Menzel back. This girl needs to be Alphaba. There is a video. I'm going to try and link it here. Hopefully, it'll be right here. But uh, if not, then you can just go and Google it for yourself. Uh, she was on a show called uh, I'd Do Anything, and she sings Defying Gravity. Now, the interesting thing is I thought she'd be great for Alphaba before I knew she did this song on uh, this TV show from England, from the BBC. It's uh, Andrew Lloyd Webber was a uh, judge on this show, and, and they eventually picked a cast. As I understand, she did win, and she the prize was that she got to be in the touring show of Oliver, and she played the role of Nancy. That said, she is just a fantastic actress. And if they, like I said, if they make a movie of Wicked, she should be Alphaba. If they can't get Adina Menzel or decide that she's, you know, too old now to play the role, which I think is silly, being especially what they can do with makeup nowadays. And as I understand, they're planning Wicked for like 2015, so it's only a few years from now, so it shouldn't be a problem. But if they decide, sorry, no, we're not putting her in there, she's too old now, uh, you go with this girl. You go with Samantha Box because she is fantastic. And if, if you see the movie and you listen to the way she sings, and think of her singing Defying Gravity if you haven't seen it yet. And you will love it. You will you will see what I'm saying, I, I'm, I'm sure, if you're a fan of musical theater at all. Again, for families, this is not necessarily the greatest choice in the world. Uh, there are some very violent scenes. Obviously, there's people in chains and everything like that. Uh, people are... Uh, being, you know, abused throughout the whole film. Uh, Fontaine is a prostitute at one point. Uh, she's kind of forced into that life, and you see her decline, which is a, a great moment artistically, but could be very, I think, even almost devastating for children. Uh, so I would be very careful as to how young your kids are when they see this movie. Um... Also, the Tenardiers, uh, particularly during the song Master of the House, which is uh, pretty crude. The, the, the song itself, I believe, is not too bad. But the uh, imagery and some of the things that go on during that is uh, kind of crude and, and not really family friendly. That said, the Tenardiers are played by Sasha Baron Cohen and uh, Helena Bonham Carter. Three names on both of them. Imagine that. But anyway, they did knock these out of the park pretty darn well. I actually imagined Mr. Tenardier being a little bit more heavy set or something like that, but Sasha knocked it out of the park. I wish Sasha would do more family-friendly things and leave the filth behind. There's movies that he does. I won't even say the names of them because I don't want to recommend them in any way, shape, or form. But he he's very talented, 
And yet he always seems to try and go cruder than necessary, even in some of the things that he, you know, th that don't need it, you know, like the master of the house number. Now, I don't know that he can be blamed entirely for this one because, you know, there are people going on and he was not the creative mind behind all of this. But that being said, it there are some crude moments there. Uh, definitely, you know, a lot of danger, uh, battle scenes. You know, there's this whole situation that happens at the uh, barricades toward the end of the movie. There's a death toward the end of the movie that I, I think if you're familiar with the story, you'll know who I'm talking about, who somebody takes his own life, commits suicide. And uh, it's uh, a very kind of, you know, graphic situation when he when he does this. I mean, I won't tell you exactly how, but if you're familiar with the story, you know how this person commits suicide. And uh, here, instead of it just being a fall, uh, the, it's there's some more bashing, if you will, that goes on. So again, kind of violent for the kids. Not necessarily recommended for that, but I would definitely recommend it for anyone who one loves musicals and st songs. Uh, two, anybody who is a fan of the story of Les Misérables, fantastic. No complaints as far as the translation. Uh, felt this movie and the musical, obviously, focuses more on Eponine and her unrequited love for Ma Marius. Uh, whereas the Liam Neeson film focuses a little bit more on Cosette, which I, I don't, I mean, it's interesting to get both versions, both angles. And I can definitely understand the artistic one, version of wanting to go for the unrequited love as a more dramatic element than the re you know requited love of Cosette. So, uh, but uh, overall, fantastic movie. I would give Lincoln uh, probably four out of five for the one wrench deduction primarily for language. And I would give Les Miserables a, uh, probably again another four out of five with the one wrench deduction being for some crudities and uh, some, some language issues, I guess. So, yeah. Both movies highly recommended, but not necessarily for little kids. So go out and see them. Enjoy yourself. You're going to have a great time seeing either movie. Either movie is a great choice, so just go see one of those films if you haven't already. If you have seen it, then you know how good it is, and tell your friends because those movies are fantastic. All right, so till next time, Movie Mechanic signing off, Movie Blog. Written in the butt, got enough for tear, took a little nibble from the barrier. I will get you in the end, dog. You'll regret you bit me, chum. Oh, I am so irritated, I get bitten in the bum. Your stupid minds! Stupid! Stupid! <laughs> <laughs>